Time now for the markets with Leighton. And you say this week's pre-Easter coal snap is creating some chatter. Not only, artists is it uh, possibly a concern as far as impact on fruit crops, but also in the markets, U.S. winter wheat in some parts of the country may be further damaged by it. Meanwhile, some traders believe corn prices can still head higher as fat cattle prices continue to defy technical signals. In some areas of the South especially, there is concern that this week's coal snap may have impacted this year's peach crop. Bloomberg News talked to the president of a 5,000 acre South Carolina farm, one that sells peaches all over the Southeast and East through Walmart and Kroger. Chalmers Carr told the Reuters that finding southern peaches on a store shelf is going to be a challenge, and if you do, prices will be up come May and June. Well, it's not only the recent additional cold weather, but also foreign affairs that are teaming up as a bearish catalyst in the wheat market these days. A Twitter update from T-Storm Weather this week noted that 13% of the U.S. hard red winter wheat production may have been afflicted by winter kill where the crop is jointing. Wheat, by the way, in the joining stage is most at risk, but freeze damage may not become really apparent for another week. The situation in Ukraine, meanwhile, is the other bearish factor at play for wheat. There are growing concerns that continuing unrest there could disrupt Ukraine's grain exports, especially wheat. In the rice market this week, tight U.S. stocks have been supportive of the market. However, increasing world stocks are quickly overshadowing that positive news. Farm Bureau analysts note that heavy rain in this past week across the Delta and on the cold temperatures served to further delay planting. AgFacts.com quotes traders as saying the rice market is still trending higher with support for July running near 1535. Well, as we record this edition at midday on Thursday, Brugler Marketing reports corn futures are trading steady across the board there. Meanwhile, analyst Sue Martin remains bullish on corn. She is of the opinion corn has not gotten close to where it's headed price-wise. If we get into May and we have a five in front of our calendar date and not much corn's gotten planted, this market's going to be moving um, more aggressively than it has. We have huge saucer bottoms on the charts, very friendly. Um, myself, I have I indicators that I watch. They are very, very low in uh, percentage and I, they're timing indicators and I just, I have a hard time being bearish corn. I like corn a lot. There are reports this week that per acre fertilizer costs for producers should be lower in 2014 than in some recent years. Monthly prices so far this year for anhydrous ammonia, diammonium phosphate or DAP, and potash have been below prices for 2011, 12, and 13. Analysts are even suggesting that fertilizer costs for corn should run of $150 per acre in 2014 compared to costs near $200 per acre the previous two crop years. Well, let's break from the markets now for a moment to look at the trivia quiz for this week. And here is the question. How does Mississippi rank nationally in the production of pulpwood? Is the answer number one, number two, or number three, or is the answer number five? I'll tell you at the end of the markets. We have news from both ends of the spectrum, as you would say, as far as the poultry industry this week. The bad news first. In southeast Alabama, Wayne Farms has announced it is laying off more than 500 workers at a processing facility in Dothan. The company says the deboning lines at that Dothan plant will no longer be necessary and that the workers involved will be let go by June 8th. All poultry slaughtered at that Dothan plant reportedly will be sent to a facility in Phoenix City, Alabama when the downsizing takes place. Right now, the Dothan plant employs a total of 900 people. Meanwhile, on the opposite end of the spectrum, some positive news in poultry. Analysts said this week that Sanderson Farms of Laurel and competitor Pilgrim's Pride will both likely have higher earnings this year. This forecast is based on stronger poultry prices and other positive factors, including higher corn production. Traders also think that U.S. export demand for chicken should rise if Mexico experiences a widespread outbreak of avian flu. We move into beef now and the fat cattle market in particular. There's still a very tight supply and demand situation in this trade, according to DTN senior analyst Darren Newsom. 
He says the June to August spreads are still very bullish, despite what some of the charts are indicating. We've got technical signals galore saying that cattle should be going down. But one thing that's always been fun about trading the cattle or watching the cattle or analyzing the cattle market is that they don't care about charts. It's a cash-driven market, and as long as the cash market remains strong, you're not going to be able to break the futures for very long. You'll see a couple weeks down, but it'll come roaring back. And I still believe that's where the cash cattle market is. That's where the live cattle futures are. Look for the June contract to continue to run. April's you know, really losing some steam in here because it's getting close to going off. Uh, but June cattle should continue to run. We close the markets in the hog sector where the curtain has been lifted a little bit on the status of the PED virus. Reuters reports Cargill Chairman Greg Page says the mortality of young pigs from the much discussed virus has abated significantly within Cargill's herds. However, Cargill is reporting what it calls multi-million dollar losses due to the shortage of hogs caused by the PED virus. Page is quoted as saying that because the death loss was in very young pigs, the situation will have a long tail, as he put it, through the end of the summer. Well, before our feature story, let's look once more at the trivia question and give you the answer for this week. The correct choice is C. Mississippi is number three in the country in the production of pulpwood.